a train just broke the sound barrier of ground transportation. China's new maglev can hit 620 miles per hour. That's faster than a Boeing 737 at takeoff. While the rest of the world argues about electric cars, China built a train that makes airplanes look slow. But here's what nobody's talking about, this technology might not even be Chinese, and the real story behind this machine could change how every country thinks about the future of travel. Most people think trains are slow, heavy metal boxes rolling on metal tracks. But China just shattered that idea completely. Their new maglev prototype hit 387 miles per hour in testing. The final version is designed for 620 miles per hour in a vacuum tube. To put this in perspective, a commercial airplane cruises at around 550 miles per hour. This train would be faster than flying. The technology works through magnetic levitation instead of wheels touching tracks. Powerful magnets lift the entire train above the guideway. No friction means no speed limit from contact. The train floats in a controlled magnetic field, pushed forward by electromagnetic forces. It's like a bullet shot through a magnetic cannon, except the bullet is a passenger train. But speed is just the beginning of this story. Here's where things get complicated. Maglev technology wasn't invented in China. It was developed in Germany in the 1960s. German engineers created the first working maglev systems. They built test tracks and prototype trains decades before China entered the game. The trans-rapid system in Germany could reach 268 miles per hour back in the 1980s. German companies spent billions developing this technology. They had working systems while most countries were still using diesel trains from the 1950s. But Germany made a critical mistake, they never scaled up production. Political debates about cost and environmental concerns slowed development. The technology remained trapped in research facilities and short test tracks. So how did China end up with the world's fastest maglev? The answer involves technology transfer deals, joint ventures, and what some engineers call strategic acquisition of foreign expertise. In the early 2000s, China needed to upgrade its transportation system fast. They invited German companies to build maglev systems in China. The deal seemed simple, the Germans would provide the technology, Chinese companies would handle construction. Both sides would benefit. Shanghai got the first commercial maglev line in 2004, built by German company Transrapid. It connected the airport to the city center. The 19-mile track took just eight minutes to complete at top speed. But technology transfer agreements have fine print. Chinese engineers worked alongside German experts. They learned the systems inside and out. They studied every component, every design principle, every manufacturing process. Within a few years, Chinese companies understood maglev technology as well as the Germans who invented it. Then China did what China does best, they took that knowledge and improved it. China's obsession with speed isn't about bragging rights, it's about economic survival. The country has 1.44 billion people spread across a massive territory. Moving people and goods efficiently isn't just convenient, it's essential for keeping the economy running. Traditional transportation creates bottlenecks. Highways get clogged. Airports reach capacity limits. Even China's impressive high-speed rail network, currently the world's largest, has constraints. Trains still touch tracks, which creates wear, noise, and speed limits. China's current high-speed rail system covers over 25,000 miles, that's more than the rest of the world combined. But even these trains max out at around 217 miles per hour in regular service. For a country trying to connect cities separated by thousands of miles, that's still too slow. The economic math is simple, time equals money. Every hour saved in transportation multiplies across millions of passengers. A businessman who can travel from Beijing to Guangzhou in three hours instead of eight can close deals faster and generate more economic activity. Consider the economics, a maglev line between Beijing and Shanghai could move passengers in under two hours. The same trip takes 4.5 hours on China's fastest conventional high-speed train. Cut travel time in half, and you essentially double the economic productivity of both cities. 
The secret to reaching 620 miles per hour isn't just magnetic levitation, it's the vacuum tube system. Most maglev trains still fight air resistance at high speeds. Pushing through air becomes the biggest obstacle to going faster. Think about it this way, a car needs more fuel to go from 60 to 80 miles per hour than from 40 to 60 miles per hour. Air resistance increases exponentially with speed. At 300 miles per hour, air resistance becomes a brick wall. At 600 miles per hour, it's like trying to push through concrete. China's solution is elegant and ambitious, put the entire maglev system inside a tube with reduced air pressure. Less air means less resistance. Less resistance means higher speeds with the same energy input. It's the same principle that makes space travel possible. Remove the atmosphere, and you can go as fast as your propulsion system allows. The engineering challenges are enormous. These tubes need to be perfectly sealed across hundreds of miles. They require massive pumping systems to maintain low air pressure. Temperature changes cause expansion and contraction that could crack the tubes or misalign the tracks. The vacuum tube maglev represents a completely new category of transportation. It's faster than driving, more efficient than flying for medium distances, and more comfortable than either option. Passengers experience smooth acceleration without the turbulence of air travel or the vibrations of road transport. Other countries are watching China's maglev development with a mixture of admiration and concern. If successful, this technology could give China a massive economic advantage. Fast, efficient transportation networks drive economic growth. Countries with better infrastructure attract more investment, create more jobs, and generate more wealth. The United States is taking notice. American companies are exploring their own vacuum tube transportation systems. Elon Musk's Hyperloop concept shares similarities with China's approach, though it uses different technology for levitation and propulsion. Several startups are working on competing systems, but most remain in early testing phases. The difference is scale and commitment. While American companies test small prototype systems, China is building full-scale infrastructure. They're not just proving the technology works, they're proving it can work at national scale. Europe is in a difficult position. German companies developed the original maglev technology, but they never built it at the scale China is attempting. European transportation infrastructure is advanced but fragmented across many countries with different standards and regulations. Japan has its own maglev program. Their system can reach 375 miles per hour and will connect Tokyo to Osaka by 2027. Japanese engineering is world-class, and their safety standards are exceptional. But even Japan's impressive technology looks slow compared to China's 620 miles per hour target. China understands this dynamic perfectly. They're not just building trains, they're building economic dominance. Building vacuum tube maglev systems requires enormous upfront investment. Initial cost estimates for China's network run into hundreds of billions of dollars. The Shanghai maglev line cost approximately $1.2 billion for just 19 miles of track, that's roughly $60 million per mile. But China's government takes a different view. They see infrastructure spending as long-term economic investment. A maglev network that lasts 50 years and transforms transportation across the country justifies massive initial costs. The economic benefits compound over decades. Traditional cost-benefit analysis doesn't capture the full value of revolutionary infrastructure. When the interstate highway system was built in America, critics called it wasteful spending. Decades later, Economists estimate it generated economic benefits worth trillions of dollars. China also benefits from scale economics. They're building multiple maglev lines simultaneously, spreading development costs across many projects. Manufacturing components in large quantities reduces per unit costs. The government financing model makes ambitious projects possible that would be impossible under pure market economics. Despite the impressive progress, Vacuum tube maglev technology faces significant challenges. Maintaining low air pressure across hundreds of miles of tube requires constant energy input. The vacuum pumps alone consume enormous amounts of electricity. Engineers estimate that maintaining partial vacuum could require the output of multiple power plants. 
safety systems become more complex when trains travel at 620 miles per hour in sealed tubes. At 620 miles per hour, a train travels more than 900 feet per second. Traditional braking systems can't handle these speeds safely. Emergency stops from maximum speed could take several miles and generate dangerous heat levels. Weather impacts create additional complications. Temperature changes cause tube expansion and contraction. A temperature swing of 100 degrees could cause miles of tube to expand by several feet. That's enough to misalign the magnetic levitation system. Earthquake zones need special engineering to prevent track misalignment. Even small movements could cause the levitation system to fail. China's engineers are addressing these challenges through extensive testing and redundant safety systems. But every solution adds complexity and cost to the overall system. China's 620 miles per hour maglev represents more than transportation technology. It's a statement about technological leadership and economic ambition. The country that masters ultra-high-speed ground transportation could gain decisive advantages in the 21st century economy. Other nations are responding with their own ambitious projects. The competition is driving innovation across multiple technologies, magnetic levitation, vacuum systems, power electronics, and advanced materials. This technological race benefits everyone through faster development and better solutions. India announced plans for its own Hyperloop system connecting major cities. Saudi Arabia included Hyperloop connections in its futuristic city projects. Russia announced research into vacuum tube transportation systems connecting Moscow to distant regions. Even developing nations don't want to be left behind in this race. The implications extend beyond transportation. Vacuum tube technology has applications in cargo transport and industrial processes. Magnetic levitation could revolutionize manufacturing and energy storage. The innovations developed for 620 miles per hour trains will likely find uses in completely different industries. China understands these broader implications. They're not just building infrastructure, they're building the foundation for future dominance across multiple sectors. The Maglev project is part of a larger strategy to lead the world in advanced technologies.